we want to find the area between the curves y equals e raised to the power of negative 0.5x and y equals 3 halves x plus 1 from x equals 0 to x equals 5. Let's begin by looking at a graph. Notice when we graph these functions, the linear function is on top and the exponential function is on the bottom. This will be important when we set up the definite integral. And x equals zero would be the y-axis, and here's x equals five. So we're looking for the area of the shaded region here. When determining the area between two functions, we want to find the definite integral of f of x minus g of x from a to b, where f of x is the top function and g of x is the bottom function. And a and b would be the x-coordinates of the points of intersection. So what's happening here is that we're finding the area below the top function and above the x-axis, and then subtracting the area below the bottom function and above the x-axis, leaving us with the area between the two functions. So going back to our example, they're asking us to find the area between x equals zero and x equals five, which means a, the lower limit of integration would be zero, and b, the upper limit of integration would be five, and then the integrand is going to be the linear function minus the exponential function. So the area is going to be equal to the integral of, again, the linear function, three-halves x plus one, minus the exponential function, which I'm going to write as e raised to the power of negative one-half x instead of negative 0.5 x. We want to integrate from zero to five. Let's go ahead and clear these parentheses here. We'll have the integral of three-halves x plus one minus e raised to the power of negative one-half x from zero to five. For the next step, we'll find the antiderivatives. So for three-halves x, we'd have three-halves times x to the second divided by two. The antiderivative of one would be just plus x. But now for e raised to the power of negative one-half x, we do have to perform a u substitution, where u would be equal to negative one-half x, therefore differential u would be negative one-half dx. If we multiply both sides by negative two, notice that negative two du is equal to dx, which means when we find the antiderivative, we'll have an extra factor of negative two, so the antiderivative would be plus two e to the power of negative one-half x. And now we'll evaluate this when x equals five, and then when x equals zero, and then find the difference. When x is five, this would actually be three-fourths times five squared. Then we'd have plus five, and we'd have plus two times e raised to the power of negative one-half times five, that's negative five-halves. Then minus, when x is zero, this would be zero, this would be zero, and then we'd have plus two times e to the zero. Notice how this would be two times one or two. So this would be three-fourths times 25, that's gonna be 75 fourths plus five, and then we have plus two times e raised to the power of negative five halves. And this is two, so we have minus two. So we have 75 fourths. And then we have five minus two, that's three. So plus three, or plus three over one, plus two times e raised to the power of negative five halves. To find this sum, our common denominator would be four. Multiply three over one by four over four. So we have 75 fourths plus 12 fourths, that would be 87 fourths. And then plus two times e raised to the power of negative five halves. So this would be the exact value of the area that we're looking for, but let's also get a decimal approximation. This is approximately 21.91417. So for our homework, unless it tells us the round, we should enter the exact value here. But to check it graphically, it's nice to have a decimal approximation. So the area of this region here is equal to 87 fourths plus two times e raised to the power of negative five halves, which is approximately 21.91417.
21.91417 square units. I hope you found this helpful.